Hi everybody, this is Ruth Royal from Youth Pledge for Employers and I'm really happy to be here today with Phil Munnings um, from Munnings Construction. He, he is the director there and we're going to be talking to him a bit about his company and the different sorts of things that people do. Hi Phil, lovely to see you. Hey, good morning. So Phil, first of all, tell us a bit about what Munnings Construction does. Okay, uh, Munnings Construction is a small principal contractor. Uh, we carry out uh, numerous projects for often repeat customers. Uh, one of our main customers is actually Norfolk County Council. And we do a lot of work in the schools and the education sector, predominantly in Norfolk, but further afield into Suffolk and Cambridge as well. Um, I'm currently on a site here at present in the centre of Norwich. Uh, this is probably a prime example of another project we'll undertake. This is for a new client called Enterprise Rent-A-Car and they're working on Burr Street where we're creating a new depot for them. This project, as I'm looking out the door at it now, involves demolition of part of the building, new steel structure and part refurbishment to create some offices. So very typical of the type of project that we undertake really. And I guess um, you don't, do different people do different parts of that process like the demolition, the construction of the steel structure. Would yes. you talk us through a bit about sort of the different skills and the different sort of trades that people do at those points? Of course, yeah. So as as principal contractor, um, that's a term under the construction design and management regulations as well. But how it defines us is we're the main contractor that take responsibility for delivering the project. It doesn't necessarily mean that we actually do all parts of the project, as you just said there. So our supply chain is really key to us. So starting with demolition, we bring in the specialist demolition contractor. They've got the necessary skills and background to uh, deconstruct a building is the right word to use rather than demolish, which is yeah. a particular case on this one because we're only sort of that far away from the next door neighbour. So they will be taking part of the building down um, by hand. So for example, even this morning, I've just walked the course with their supervisor to agree the final um, sequence of works um, so that it's done right and done correctly but that's exactly what you're touching on we bring in the yes. right trade with the right specialists who have got the skills and experience to do that part of the job and likewise once that's gone and the building is removed we will then step in ourselves because one thing or one of the main parts of the work we do ourselves is the groundworks right so we're a principal contractor that delivers our own groundworks. And what Reason. does groundworks mean? Okay. Groundworks is everything um, below below the below ground level, really. So everything right. involving drainage on this particular job, for example, is foundations, drainage, petrol interceptor for a new right. uh, wash bay was being constructed. And the reason we do our own groundworks is there's a lot of risk involved with working in the ground. So we manage the risks ourselves with our own skilled, trained and uh, qualified, directly employed personnel. Is that because if you don't get the groundworks right, nothing else is going to be OK? If you get the groundworks wrong, yes, it tends to go very wrong. And um, if you look at it even financially, with a lot of the risk that's in the ground, it tends to be you get the groundworks right, the project goes right on a financial basis as well. The safety bit, yeah. go, you know, goes without saying everything has to be safe and correct. But you manage the risks in the ground correctly, the project tends to be a success. So we manage that risk ourselves. And then coming out of the ground there will be a, a steel wash bay construction, which again, we bring in our specialist um, subcontractors who deal with the steel and the cladding. Um, that's a very small uh, supply chain that we have. So we have companies that know how we operate because every principal contractor works a little bit differently. Our supply chain know how we like to do things and that's why we call upon them. And it, yeah. it works. It works very well. Oh, that sounds like I can see how you're all sort of um, sort of building, no pun intended, that like you're all building blocks in that in that piece to get something done. What sort of um, skills and uh, sort of tasks do people do like for groundworks? What sort of things are they doing in okay. their day to day jobs and what sort of skills do you look for? OK, well, a lot of it involves um, plant operation. 
service uh, for machine drivers who are the, the operators who uh, operate the, the excavators. You typically a groundworks gang is a gang of three people. So you'll have right. a digger driver, uh, a dumper driver and a ground worker. And then a third person who is typically the banksman or the guy in the ground. So if you imagine someone putting in a drain, uh, a drain run, for example, some pipes in the ground, you'll have the person driving the digger, the person driving the dumper, which brings the sand and the shingle and the excavation to and from where you're digging and the guy in, on the ground. And that's a typical groundworks team. So we have a number of our groundworks teams. And what's important with them is, is that they are teams because they're often people who have worked together for years and years and they get to know how people work. So the banksman will know how the digger driver works. It's very important for the safety side of things. But also that's, that's how you get efficiency. Because yeah. Of, yeah, a, a real team. A real, yeah, in, in the true sense of it. So very important in groundworks because it can be dangerous if it's done incorrectly so you always have to take your time ensure the works are planned you follow your method statement and your safe system of works and you're also always conscious of your surroundings because if you're working in the ground you can be susceptible to changes in weather conditions for example yeah. so if you're in the ground and you're in a particular type of ground if it starts to rain that ground sometimes can hold water or make the excavation unstable for example so very important the teams work well together that's really interesting because even just in that sort of small part you can see how people need really good attention must need really good attention to detail because they've got plans and information all that the they've plans. got to follow they've got the they need the ability to be able to follow the plans they need to have good communication skills to be able to interact with their colleagues yeah. they need to have that kind of um like you say that awareness to their surroundings but also as well they may well need more technical skills like being mm -hmm. able to operate the machinery yeah. too so it's a real breadth of things isn't it just it is. in those sort of those jobs mm -hmm. I, I wonder, Phil, if you're recruiting sort of somebody into your organisation, into a kind of entry role, what sort of jobs do people start off in? They often start off, if they're coming in entry level, they often start off uh, potentially as uh, labourers, yeah. uh, general labourers. And that's when we've had a number of people join our company from that over the years. I've got one example of one of our, he's now a foreman actually, working Groundworks Gang. He joined us as a labourer. But they send them people who show a little bit more. They show a little bit of in, straight away enthusiasm, willingness to learn, and then they get uh, taken forward a little bit. Okay, look, you're standing out. You don't just want to turn up and just do as you're told. You're willing to learn a bit and offer some suggestions. So, yeah, this one guy has been with us now, must be about seven years. So he sort of wow. came in as, a, as an operative. He's now, yeah, a working foreman. So when myself or one of my senior management colleagues go and visit one of the sites, he's the person who will step forward and um, show us around the site and say, what have you been doing? What are you doing? And what are you going to do? And he'll tell us his detailed plan and takes responsibility for yeah, delivering the site. So, oh wow, that's a yeah. that's a brilliant story for him. That's great to hear how somebody's progressed. And what sort of stages would he have gone through to get from sort of labourer to foreman? Well, as as his um, uh, role develops and he takes on more responsibility on site, we uh, align that with specific training during certain levels of his career. Right. So, for a particular example of this guy, we uh, all of his basic training in needs, which is CSCS cards, general site health and safety, going back a few years now. And then we um, sent him to City College at Norwich uh, yeah. to do an HNC in site supervision. Oh, brilliant. So, he'd done that alongside his site works because I find I've, I've done lots of training myself through my career. Yeah. So, I, I, I know that it's so important for training to be specific and timely with what you're doing in your career. So we've timed it very carefully with him so that he's getting the right level of responsibility on site with the right level of competency that he's gaining through training and qualifications. And the yeah. two go hand in hand and dovetail very well. So 
yeah, the more I think about that, that particular guy is quite a success story, actually. Yeah, that's brilliant <laughs> to hear. And I, and I think that's such an interesting reflection, how particularly like for your industry, that combination of practical learning and sort of, that, you know, sort of um, academic, you know, book learning yeah, like from, through yes. the course that they mesh together to help people progress through. If you've got people that are thinking about um, sort of going in uh, to this type of role, Phil, Firstly, what sort of things do you look for from people joining a company, their particular qualifications or skills? And then I guess probably then I'm sort of interested to hear about what sort of qualities you think maybe make, um, you know, good good, mm -hmm. te good team members? Yes, very much so. We've got one apprentice at the minute, a carpentry apprentice. And I would say we want people to be just like him. <laughs> uh, he, he came in, um, he was quite, he'd done his work experience with us actually, a couple of weeks over the previous summer in his last year at high school. And he's a great guy, honest, he was really nervous on his two week work experience. And if you see him now after a couple of years with us, he's already shown uh, signs of being a supervisor in, wow. in the near the years to come. But the first thing with, with, uh, with our carpentry apprentice is He's honest, hardworking, and reliable. He'll you'll set him a task, thinking, "Oh, that's going to take a few hours." And next thing you know, a couple of uh, an hour later, he's knocking on your door saying, "I've done that. What can I do next?" You know that real approach Brilliant. to being genuine. Some bit of fact, but a genuine, <laughs> reliable, hardworking young chap. Um, yeah, and really proactive, like coming and saying, yeah. actually, I finished that, what can what can I do now, rather than sort of standing yeah. around waiting to be told. Because I've seen a, 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 a lot of years in the industry, I've even seen grown, grown aged men who are site labourers hiding around the corner, you know, they've done their <laughs> sweeping up and they've not come and said, what would you like me to do next? And they're Work yeah. ethic is something Starting really off, important, yeah. isn't yeah. it? To it's employers. going to the person, and you can't, yeah. you can't. That's not through training or uh, ac academia. That's through the, the person and how they've been raised and brought up, really. So that's key. You've got to have that willingness to start yeah. with, or you're really not going to. You've got to want to do it yourself. You know, no one's going to do it for you. So you've got to have that to start with. Do you think as well, do, if people are interested in sort of doing work experience, etc., or are there any skills you look for people to already have before sort of coming along to you? Because of the nature of our industry, you can you can be trained um, to, do, yeah. to learn to drive a digger, to learn to be a carpenter. So it's having that core ethic of wanting to learn, really. So yeah. and that's why the industry is... So people orientated because it needs to be because yeah. although they're trying to, it's, it's not robots that put buildings together. It's teams of people. Absolutely. There is a place for robots. There is an offsite and automation, but there will always be people in the construction industry, and you need the people who want to be part of a team because you're never on your own in construction. It's always it's always some level of teamwork. Whether it's you and you and one other person, or site of fifty hundred people on. Yeah. So you've got to want to, yeah, work as part of a team and get involved with the project goals and play your part in, yeah, building something. That's really, um, that's really brilliant. Sort of how you've talked that through it makes that feel. I can even see that in my mind about mm. how that all works as well and fits together. And um, Phil, really, just to end on, if thinking about people at the start of their careers if you were to go back and think about your younger self starting out on your career journey have you got a piece of advice that you'd give yourself or that you'd go back and tell your younger Phil oh, self? I well um, I made that decision uh, I remember actually probably one cold February day I was in Great Yarmouth uh, driving a dumper actually along the seafront we used to do a lot of work up on the industrial end of the harbour at Yarmouth uh, and that's when I said to myself at 16 said I've got to get myself to college and get myself some qualifications and that's what I did so my background was a ground worker for, as a teenager you know I was on sites from as soon as I could hold a shovel I was in the ground and driving diggers but then I went took myself off done the GMVQ ended up uh, going to university getting my degree and I'm um, uh, I'm now a, a chartered builder, so I'm a professional 
construction person. Wow. But that has always been alongside having the practical ability to still put my boots on and go on site and get in the hole if you need to. So the advice is be in, be involved. Do what you want to do and, 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 and do it from all levels because like my father said, because this is a family business, I used to be the guy at the bottom of the manhole cleaning out the rubbish at the bottom because I was yeah. told if you're ever going to ask someone else to do it, you need to have done it yourself. Oh, so, that's yeah. a great attitude to have. Yeah. Oh, Phil, that is brilliant. And thanks so much for sharing that story with us of yeah. you, age 16, on a cold yeah. armor day, cold, yeah. making a decision about what to do with the rest of your life. It's yeah. been absolutely brilliant to talk to you today. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Okay. No, it's not a problem. It's, um, it's great. You know, more people we can encourage into this industry. Um, I'm a full advocate for that. So always happy to help. Thanks, Phil. Thank you.